Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, just click on it. It only takes a second and we're going to be doing a lot more videos on things like this and all kinds of old and interesting things. Uh, I've done a quick intro on the channel as well so you can take a look at what we've got going on at the moment. Right, this video. Over the next week or so, I'm going to be building the new radiator pack for this van behind me. It's a long-term project. It'll be done hopefully this year. Um, it's kind of a rolling restoration that needs a bit of work to get it going. It's my Volkswagen T25. Now, job number one, something I want set on the shelf, which I know I've got to do, is the radiator pack. At the minute, it's got its original 1.6 litre naturally aspirated diesel radiator in it. I'm going to upgrade it to a thicker radiator, which is available really cheaply. And uh, for some reason, whoever has had this van previously has taken the cowling off, so it's got no cooling fan either. So this is the new radiator. That is a cowling that I got off of eBay. And another thing that's missing, and that's pretty much unique, uh, unique, it's pretty much common for all T25s, is around the radiator, I'm sure you can imagine, you've got, you've got little paddles, like little plates that divert the air, instead of running around the radiator, that make, make like an air dam to make sure all the air goes through the radiator. Now, originally these were made of like a cottony, cardboardy, resiny, crappy thing that, um, well, they were in there for two years, the water got to them, they fell apart. Luckily though, you can go on the internet now, these came from Camper Culture, you can get a full set of uh, nice polypropylene remakes and they don't break the bank either, they weren't very much so they'll all be going back on. I'm going to show you a few tricks as we get through the video on how to make your brand new radiator last longer. This is something I've done uh, on a couple of my cars and never had a problem with it. So next thing I've got to do is run that cowling, strip it and run it round to the powder coat as he's going to shot blast it off, powder coat it all up so it'll never rust ever again. I mean it's powder coated now and it's, it must be what 30 years old and it's absolutely fine. So I'm going to have it done again and uh, then we'll start building the fan pack up. That way when I'm ready to do it, when I've got it on the ramp, it'll just be a case of slide the entire unit up, tighten the bolts up, good to go. So, I'll disappear for a second now, which will probably be about a week, and I'll come back dressed completely different. Sounds good. Okay, okay we're back. I've been to the powder coaters, they powder coated the cowling for me, that's all rebuilt. Uh, in front of me here I've got the radiator. Now, I told you in the first part of the video I was going to be showing you a way of making your radiator last a bit longer. This is something I've done on a few radiators on my own cars. It's worked really well. So, what I've done to this radiator, it's brand new. It's an aluminium radiator with plastic tanks, but I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work for a copper one. Go down to your local Home Depot, you know, B&Q, any parts stores like that, and uh, get yourself some clear lacquer, like you use on car body paint, that kind of thing. And uh, absolutely, Hammer the radiator with it, for as much on as you can get on. Um, all that's going to do is it stops the water when it sits in there making the aluminium go all fustery and horrible. I put it into my Jeep probably three, four years ago and the radiator still looks like the day I fitted it. It doesn't overheat, there's no adverse effects to doing it, it just makes everything last a bit longer. I suppose you could use paint really, but I've found that works well, so that's what I do. Right, cowling. Before it looked all disgusting and horrible, but look at this. Well, that looks smart. Looks fantastic. So, what we're going to do now, um, really easy to fit. We make sure we're on the bottom of the radiator, because it's quite confusing on these, uh, which is both outlets at the bottom. And we're going to hook it on. And there's a trick here, too. Once that's on, something else to set I like to do. This thing's going to run two cooling fans now. It's got the original one here in the back. That's obviously going to stay. Uh, and on the front, I'm going to fit this bad boy, 18 inch passive star fan. Uh, this came off of eBay, it's only a cheap one. 80 watts, 12 volts. So the thermostat that turns the fan on is actually bolted into the front of the radiator. I'm going to use the original one off of the fan. Um, it's got two temperature settings. I think one comes in at about 70 degrees, one comes in about 85. You can look at them, they're all about the same. So what I'm going to do, the lower one, I'm going to switch this fan, and as soon as it switches to the higher one, if it starts getting warm, it'll turn them both on. So that's really easy, I'll do a quick video on that when I get around to doing it. But that means I've got to fit the, uh, the big fan to the radiator. And all you do in the kit, you get these like long tie-up type things, a special little bracket, and I've already done it. So if I tip this up, you can see four little things poking out the front of the radiator. Now all that happens there is this fan's going to sit against those, you 
pull it up against it and it holds the fan in place, it's as simple as that. But, for the back of the radiator, on this nice new shiny cowling, there's another trick you can do to make it cool a bit better. Now the idea behind a cowling is that when the fan switches on, it causes a vacuum inside the cowling which pulls air through the radiator. And that sounds grand, except if you were to get down here now and look underneath this, there are holes all over the place. You know, it's like a gap all the way around it. So obviously if you've got a vacuum trying to be caused in here, then a bloody great big gap the whole way around it, you're going to lose quite a lot of the, of the efficiency of it just by dragging air through the gap instead of through the radiator. So, for that, regular household silicon, make sure it's exterior stuff, the stuff that stinks of vinegar. And all you've got to do, this isn't something you're supposed to do, this is just something I do, but I do find it works well. Just go around the crack, everywhere where you can see uh, potentially air is going to leak into the uh, cowling. Run over the top of it. And that will just act as a very, you know, temporary sort of a temporary permanent, if you like, barrier. You'll be able to get this off again if you uh, if you ever needed to. Just run. That's why I haven't put it on first. It's only sat around the outside edge. You could have put it on first and like really bed it down into it. But at the end of the day, the bolts are there to hold the cowling on. You, the last thing you want is to find you need to change this fan because it goes out straight away and you're going to destroy the radiator and cowl and trying to get it apart. So, yeah, just put it around the, uh, the outside edges. This is what I'm going to do now. The only thing I would say is don't go mad along the bottom edge because you need somewhere for water to escape. If you, uh, if you completely seal it, then obviously um, all that's going to happen is the water's going to well up in there and drop your radiator out. So don't, don't do that. So, Finish this off quickly, I'll put the bolts in. That's in there. You could use all kinds of adhesives and stuff like that. I use a sealant which I'll be using when I do the engine rebuild that would fasten this onto this thing so well. You know, the man that pulled it off would be crowned king of England. But there's really no need. It's not there for, uh, for anything other than an air barrier. So here we go, that's all done. I'll do it across the top. Let's have a look. Excuse my back to the camera. No, I didn't. So, put that in there. You can see I'm going to fill that gap up. I've got four more little gaps that are quite large. I'm going to fill those off camera. I don't need to waste your time looking at that, but I will fill them. I'm going to uh, completely fill. There we go. That's good. That's just a case of put the screws in to hold the cowling down. Now, you can put in the comments below here, because I've never done one of these before. Um, the holes that hold the, uh, you know, the, the pieces in the radiator that hold the cowling on, they came completely untapped. Now, I'm guessing they were supposed to have some kind of a self-tapper in them. But I don't like the idea of that. So what I've done is I've actually tapped it to quarter inch, an imperial thread. Now, the reason I went for the imperial thread rather than a standard metric one is because I always find that if you've got an imperial thread like quarter inch into plastic, it'll hold a lot better. What's that one? There's six of these in total. As I said before, this is the 42mm radiator, not the 38, so we're going to be improving cooling just by fitting it. But uh, we want to give it every chance that we possibly can. And then we'll get on to fitting the, the big fan on the front. These things don't cool the best thing, you know, they're not that great for cooling. So uh, every, everything you can do to give a bit of help, so much the better. And this one, what I'm going to do at the back, just to make sure that uh, one thing's having the radiator at the front and all these nice little mods working. But, if the water's not getting out of the engine up front, it's a long way for it to be pushed. Uh, well, all this is useless. Now you can buy water accelerator pumps. Um, they're quite expensive actually, but I found out by just digging around on the internet a little bit that you can uh, use one from, an, I think it's the Audi A4 with a diesel. They fit one, or no, no, it's turbo petrol. They fit one standard. And uh, that's what I've got. I've managed to get one second hand. So 
when I put this in, I'm actually when the big fan comes in, I'm going to make that click a relay in the back to turn that on. So that's grounded. Okay, looks good to me. So then, what we need to do is fit on the big fan, and that's us all done. This thing's ready to go on. Okay. silicone all over myself. I'm going to turn this over Come up. without scratching this nice big powder coating. The guys that powder coated this actually did a really good job and they turned it around in like two days. So uh, well done to them for that. I'm using the work so I can set it up like that which looks great. Right, so the next job is a icky is get some blue rolls so I don't get myself covered. Now we get the, uh, the big 18 inch fan, I'm going to put that on the pull. Now this is one of those fans that uh, runs both ways, it can be a push, pan, push fan or a pull fan. So uh, what I'm going to do, there it is, a giant great big thing. This thing overheats now, I'll be amazed. You uh, put those over there, there you go. First thing we've got to do is fit the little rubber pads that protect the radiator, so I'll put these on first. These just slide over the top. One, two, come on, two. That's just to stop the fan digging in. You'd think this would make the radiator leak, but the reality is it's probably three or four mil away from the nearest uh, bar in the radiator, from the nearest core, so I can't see it doing any real harm. And they do fasten on quite nicely, so we've got those on, four of those. Then we position the fan where we want it. Now, that silicone stinks. You know, it's good stuff when it smells of vinegar like that. One, two, three, four. Look at that, eh? Perfect. It's almost like that was made, just in case you want to know, this is an 18 inch fan. So that seems to fit as you can see really nice. That's going to get the job done, I think. So, then you get the Fasteners to hold it down, which consist of some springs. Which you're going to slide on like this, all the way up. One. And you get these little fellas, they're just like little discs that have got the uh, flacky bit inside them. So, there we go. And then put a bit of tension on there. Oops. Like that. That'll hold the fan in position. It doesn't weigh a ton, you know. If I was just fitting this fan, I'd actually make a little cowling for it. Two. And the other thing I'm going to do. because the radiator does come quite close to the front panel. Four, we're in. That's all on, that's fantastic. So, yeah, that's great. The other thing I'm going to do with it, just because, is I'm actually going to put another run of silicone just around it, for the same reason we did it to the cowling. It's alright having this really big fan just here, but if when it turns on all the air blows out the sides of it, it's not going to do us any good. So. Put white red, not putting loads on, just enough, just a smear. And there we go. That's fantastic. And that I think will about do. So what I'm going to do with this radiator now is I'm going to leave it overnight to dry. Then get that on. You can just go upstairs, get wrapped up, and uh, when we come round to doing the cooling system on the van, as we've done the engine rebuild, it will get fitted, and uh, hopefully that will be it. I mean, they're called okay when they were new, I mean, they weren't great, you could make them overheat, but hopefully we're just with this little bit of uh, extra work we've done, the extra fan and the bigger radiator, hopefully that will mean 
it'll stand no chance. We, we can sit there in the south of France with it 120 outside and the engine will stay nice and cool. Now I don't know if it's been done before. I know it's been done on the Caravals, I've not seen it done on a, on a camper. You can buy a kit to put air conditioning in these things and I'm going to try and do it for this one. But I've got to research that a bit more yet. I've already got an air conditioning pump in the brackets for the engine. So you can actually buy a nice little matrix. All I've got to do is find some way of cooling everything or somewhere to put the, uh, the, the air conditioning radiator. There we go, so that's just a run of silicone all the way around there. That's that, all done. I'll trim these off with this pair of pliers that I put there on purpose. Come here. So these go like this. One, two, three, four. Now if this thing manages to overheat after that, well, I don't know, there's not much more you can do, is there? So that's it. Completely radiator pack built for the T25. Um, Thanks for watching, subscribe, uh, please feel free to comment below if you've seen something that you either like or even if you don't like it, if you know something I don't, please feel free to tell me. And um, as always, thanks for watching.